Slumdog Millionaire was the smash hit of 2008, winning eight Oscars, including Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Adapted Screenplay, not to mention catapulting stars Dev Patel and Frida Pinto to international fame. In the decade plus since Slumdog's release, Pinto has built up an impressive body of work and an impressive reputation as an activist. She's been an outspoken supporter of the Me Too movement and taken a firm stance again, working with directors like Woody Allen, who have been accused of sexual assault claims he's denied. She's even stayed busy during the pandemic with two current projects, Intrusion, the story of a home invasion, it's available now and trending on Netflix, and sci-fi romance Needle in a Time Stack, which will be out in theatres on demand October the 15th. Earlier I spoke to Frida Pinto about her projects, her career and her activism. Frida Pinto, thanks so much for joining me on the show this evening. Uh, you've got Intrusion on Netflix now and Needle in a Time Stack coming out October the 15th. What was it like working on these new projects during a global pandemic with all the associated restrictions and testing, etc.? So Needle in a Time Stack, I actually filmed two years before the pandemic. It's just taken a while for it to oh. get released. Intrusion, I definitely shot during the pandemic. And um, it was it was interesting because that was the first film I shot during the pandemic. So, you know, at first there's a lot of trepidation, a lot of nervousness that you're going in with because you do not know what to expect, what not to expect. Quite frankly, the worst part about the whole thing, you know, besides the, te the testing and the mask wearing and all of that is so uh, required and I'm so for it. But the sad part for me is when at the end of the filming process, when the crew says, oh, see you on the next project. And all I realize is for the, the last six weeks, I've not seen their faces. I've just seen their eyes. I haven't seen the rest yes. of the face. So I don't know if I'll recognize them again. And I think that's kind yeah, of, yeah. that for me was the saddest part about filming in the pandemic. <laughs> Yeah, it must have been very strange. It's been a strange 18 months, especially for the movie industry. Um, virtual events, uh, theatres closed. What is it like now to have movies back in the cinemas, in-person award ceremonies? Yeah, I think, I mean, I haven't been to any of those, but I've been watching them and, you know, I've been still staying quite safe as possible and not going to theatres and whatnot. But, but but I do think there is a certain joy that it's bringing back as an artist. It's bringing it back to my life, knowing that that world is coming, getting back to us little by little, slowly, but it's coming back. And so there's a bit of a relief, I will say. You've been known, Frida, for speaking up for women, uh, young girls, for gender equality across the board, uh, especially in the industry you work in. And there's a moment, I was reading an interview, I think you did a couple of years ago, where you described a frustrating moment on the set of Rise of the Planet of the Apes in 2011. You were playing a scientist working with animals in the film, but you were asked to wear impractically high heels. Uh, you said you spoke up to the producers about how ridiculous this was, but you wished you'd been more forceful. I wonder now, do you feel these days more comfortable about voicing your opinions on set now? Do you feel there's been a cultural shift with a new generation of performers being more confident to speak up on set? Yeah, I, I, I think the confidence also comes with experience, Nettie. So I feel um, now that I've been around for the past 12 to 13 years, uh, people are taking me more seriously as well. So when I say that I'm uncomfortable uh, playing a primatologist in high heels, I think this would be this would be a note that would be taken very differently uh, by the studio. Um, j a note would be, the Rise of the Planet of the Apes was like in my first or second year after Slumdog Millionaire, so everyone just thought I was like, yes. this newbie and, and no one really wanted to pay any attention to a note that was that crucial, that I thought was very crucial for my character and for how she looked. Uh, but I do think that the collective um, energy that has come together and the movement that has come together that is making our voices heard a lot more um, is definitely a, a much better platform to be speaking out, speaking out from um, rather than back in the day yes. when you were just doing it um, isolated. And just on that issue of speaking up collectively, as someone who has spoken out both individually and as part of a collective on the issue of gender equality, uh, especially in the film industry, I want to talk just briefly for a moment about the Me Too movement. Harvey Weinstein produced mm -hmm. your film, Miral. Uh, Woody Allen directed you in You Will Meet a Tall Dark Stranger. You've publicly expressed your support for women who have come forward with accusations. Do you feel that the Me Too movement has had an enduring effect both in your industry 
and in America as a whole? Um, for sure. I think, I think there is a lot of work that is yet to be done and it will continue being done, um, especially when it still comes to pay parity and, um, and, and just, you know, let's talk about diversity as well for a second, uh, the kind of roles that women are playing and women of color specifically are playing. Um, and then, of course, yes. there's, there's this, there, there are other, you know, kind of variants to that as well, like Muslim women. We need to see more of them on screen. We need to see black Muslim women. We need to see queer women and uh, the queer population. And I feel like that is going to be a whole new other offset of the Me Too movement in a way because it, re it requires us to be able to speak out and feel confident and secure when we speak out. Um, so I do feel that there is definitely, there has been an effect that has been monumental in the way the Me Too movement was received. And the work just has to continue. It just can't stop. Yes. It just can't stop there. Um, and I think there's a lot more to be done. So, Frida, you achieved massive success around the globe with Slumdog Millionaire. I remember watching it at the time, thinking, what a film. Uh, so different to anything we've seen before as someone who's of Indian origin as well. You're a Hollywood star now. You live in L.A. But is it true you've never been cast in a lead role in a Bollywood movie back in India where you were born and raised? I actually never started in Bollywood, so that's why I was never cast in a Bollywood film for you to begin with. Uh, my first ever movie, my first ever acting role was Slumdog Millionaire. And before that, I just, you know, I, I hosted a travel show and I did all kinds of odd jobs. I, I, I was a um, uh, children's party, um, what do you call it? Like, a, like an entertainer at children's parties. Uh, and so, so no, so there was no time for me to kind of start in Bollywood when my first film was Slumdog Millionaire. And then it just propelled me into this um, whole new other world of international film and television. Um, so it is true. It is absolutely true. I have not done a lead role in a Bollywood movie. Is it, is it something you have your eye on if they were to approach you? I don't know if they have approached. Is it something you'd want to do one day? You know, I, I, I do look at um, Indian stories uh, on a more of a global platform. So if there was something that came from India, and let's not just label it as just Bollywood, I would want it to be an international yeah. project. Uh, and by that, I mean an Indian filmmaker and uh, an Indian story and all of the things that make it all around Indian. Uh, but it would have to be for the international population. So the answer is yes. There's it, never say never. Never say never. Fair enough. Uh, one last question. We're talking about India. You've celebrated in the past the eradication of polio in India. You've written in support of vaccination and especially COVID vaccines. We know that India has been devastated by the Delta wave. Uh, the vaccinations are ongoing. Uh, you've been campaigning on that behalf on Instagram elsewhere. What do you think the rest of the world needs to do to help India get more people vaccinated? I think it all starts with awareness and education and I think that has that's been um, probably a huge setback for a lot of, of countries in the world the other one the other major major setback is access and I think you know whether we're talking about um, countries like India or countries of Africa there is no access and the vaccines are not even reaching there or there's a shortage of vaccines and I feel um, if we can appeal as a global audience, a global as global citizens, if we can appeal to the, the 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 governments of the world that have enough to share with the rest of the world, I think that is where we can actually really start. You know, it's a very small step. It's just petitioning. It's just letting your voices be heard. Um, and then, of course, like having an educational angle that goes along with it, because there is so much. Um, misinformation and, um, well, lack of information as well. Frida, we'll have to leave it there. Intrusion is streaming on Netflix right now. Needle in a Time Stat will be available in select theatres on digital and on demand October the 15th. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.